Hi. So you might be one. You might have a lot of questions. You're seeing Cave Story. You're seeing Cave Story 3D. You see Reverse Boss Order, and if you know anything about Cave Story, that makes zero sense. Don't worry about it. So still say your name. You have a name. Oh right, I'm Amber. Hi. <laughs> I'm Amber. Hi. So, she's Amber. World record holder in pretty much any category of Cave Story 3D. Not to know I didn't quit, but that's because I was sick. I. Um, I'm Ikuyu and I'm gonna be commentating. <laughs> oh, we're not even gonna answer that question. By the way, if you haven't played Kim History, you should. Anyways, we're gonna probably jump immediately in because this is a really, really dense run and we have a lot to explain. So, is there a timer that you need to start for the host? Oh, uh, just give a countdown. Okay, so I'm gonna start in three, two, two one, go! go. Okay, so this is Cave Story 3D. This is a port of Cave Story, and it's actually the only port of Cave Story which was actually directed, as far as I know, by Daisuke Amaya to the extent that it has a significant amount of changes by him. And as you'll notice, it's in 3D, hence the name Cave Story 3D. Who would have guessed? So... There's a lot of changes. It's got graphical updates. It's got a couple of new areas. It's it got me failing to a move in. A completely new soundtrack by Danny B. Yes. And it's got a bunch of things like the inventory, which we're going to go into very deep detail of how the inventory works for no reason whatsoever very shortly. But I also want to mention just some basic movement stuff while we're in like the opening sequence. Which um, is pretty normal, you don't worry. Yeah, there's nothing weird here. So... Movement in this game, you're going to notice that I jump a lot. Jumping is about 5% faster than moving normally. The game runs at 60 FPS, whereas the Freeware original ran at 50 FPS as a thing so that people on 50 Hz monitors can play the game. Um, we're going to get an item called Booster 2.0, which basically if we boost into any terrain and jump immediately, we can keep the momentum from it. And I'm going to explain that now because there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on when we Yeah, it's very convenient that we get booster to be know since it's a required item for best standing. Yeah, I mean, there's other methods of flight that we can get, but yeah. So I want to explain how the inventory works for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So when you open the inventory, the game does a couple of things. So the inventory works the same way as the scripts for the rest of the game. And that means that when you, the game stores all scripts for areas in a buffer. This buffer is never cleared, and that is important. So, we're not going to go get Locket. When I open the inventory in a couple of minutes, the game is going to store what area I'm in, and the script of the area I'm in. Oh, I'm going to actually start the run over. Just for no reason whatsoever. Oh, hey, the inventory is still open for some reason. Oh, oh hey there, Sue. <laughs> She's the wrong one, I not know. Sue. I know, <laughs> I know that's just the only So, you may be very confused right now. <laughs> The game is not confused, only you are confused. So, when I... Well, you can exit the game with the inventory open. The game never clears anything to do with the inventory. Ever. Which means that when you exit the game and you reload a file, the inventory will be open when you open it. Now, when you close the inventory, the script from the area that you were in, the game stores that script. What script it was. I gotta say, no worries, self-lock. Um, the game stores that script. And therefore, when we unload, when we unload the inventory, the game reloads the screen of the area oh. we quit in and applies it to the current area we're in because it assumes it's the same area. So I'm going to collect the map system here for absolutely no suspicious reasons. I just want to see the map. It's important. Therefore, later, and this is very important, we are going to... Um, when the game applies the new oh, scripts to the jump. area, we can trigger events from the area we quit at in the new area we load up. This also, I want to explain a thing. So, we make use of time attack in this run. It's allowed because there is no way to clear time attack being open. Yeah, it's similar to Donkey Kong 64 for those who know the game. Which is convenient because I want the fireball. Oh, wait, that's not the fireball. <laughs> We're at Arthur's house, nice! <laughs> I don't want to be at Arthur's house. <laughs> I want to be insane. So I'm going to easy mode, not for any of the bosses, for bushlands. Oh, I, I hit the trigger because I was talking. Um, we're, because bushlands is the hardest part of this run. 
because we're gonna get their three HP with no items. Anyways, hi Sandstone, hi Curly. Oh, now she wants to talk to us, not when we're right next to her. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Curly's a little shy right now, you see, she's very confused. Anyways, I changed my mind. I want to go to Arthur's house. <laughs> so, basically, the glitch you've just seen, I mean, you saw all glitches, but the glitch you've just seen is the single breaking point of the game. Change my mind, I actually want to play time attack. Oh no! This is gonna happen a lot, because this game is very dense, there's a lot going on, a lot to keep track of. So with me talking, I'm getting messed up a bunch. That's why my time- So my world record is an hour 12 minutes, you'll notice that the- The estimate is much higher than that, this is gonna be why. Okay, so actually I changed my mind, I want to go to Arthur's house. Oh no! I forgot a thing. <laughs> I forgot a thing because I was talking! So, we need- we need map system. Amber, that's why you have like, someone in commentary. Yeah, but Emma, <laughs> it's the first time I get to commentate a run of this game by myself, so. So, we actually need map system, but we don't have Arthur's key, so we can't get back into Arthur's house. But luckily, luckily, Arthur's house contains a lot of cool stuff. And hey, he's got a spare- hey, he's got a spare map. He's also got a spare key, but we'll get that later. So we need map system for- so, when you- Load the game with the inventory already open. Uh, because it's loaded the script for the area you're supposed to be in, the map now corresponds, or rather, any items in your inventory now correspond, will try to trigger things in that room. Arthur's House is actually the only room in the entire game that has scripts high enough that the inventory can, like, items in the inventory can naturally trigger its scripts. And it just so happens that most of your actual items will correspond to the teleporter actions, which means... We, got we are now in Bushland, so I have to wait here for the HUD to reappear, because that means that the teleporter animation has finished, otherwise we soft lock. So the nemesis happens to be right there, because we are current the game currently has the script for time attack loaded. I'm gonna be a little safe here because as you notice I have 3 HP. In a PB attempt, I would probably be on normal ending. Anyways, that gave me booster. Because that triggers the The opening of because the way time attack gives- oh, that's unfortunate. The way time attack actually- oh, I missed all of the boosts because I'm talking. The way the, the time attack actually gives you the booster is it's just the entrance script. Also, there's that boosting I was talking about. I actually want to kill all these because I really want to get uh, level 2 blade as yeah, early as Yeah, um, the mana are guaranteed to give you experience because they use a different- um, that is script that every other, that most enemies in the game, they are hard-coded to give you experience every time you kill them. So, so I have to... The most reliable source of XP. So I have to reload the area in order to load the actual script, because otherwise we can't really get out without going all the way back to the left. Now I'm gonna do a safety strat here. Now, I still do this in my PB attempts, because I don't think it's worth it until I get the category under sub-hour to skip this. And we're gonna actually go quite a bit higher on HP than I would normally go. Normally I go to about 20 to 30 HP, on normal. I'm gonna go- I'm gonna get 13 life capsules here, because now the Cthulhu here is overflowing to the life capsule. So this doesn't actually directly correspond to the script of the life capsule, which as a result means that when we collect it, it doesn't destroy itself, because it's overflowing. It's trying to destroy an object which might exist on this map, I don't know offhand. Um, yeah, also like Error handling of KV3 is extremely generous. Yeah. Even if the game has no pointers or stuff like that, it's never gonna crash. To this day, we don't know how to crash KV3 3D. Yes, we do. What? We, we do? We found the, 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 the unused script which allows us to move out of bounds. Oh, right. And the game doesn't know what to do. I mean, it does. It knows what to do. It throws up an exception. <laughs> and the game crashes. So yeah, thanks to the uh, generosity of this Tudulu, we are gonna get a lot of health. Anyways, yeah, I'm going much higher in health. I'm gonna get 68 HP here. And so yeah, we're gonna have 68 HP for this run. Okay, so now we need to get out of Bushland. So we've gotten... The main reason we actually need to collect Nemesis... We don't need to collect Nemesis specifically. Also, I'm collecting the Rusty Key here for absolutely no reason. Because it's required to kill one of the bosses later. Um, so... We need- the blade act is the best weapon in the game, generally. Even in, like, actual speedruns, once you get it, it's basically what you use for most of the run. Yep. And it actually- 
cannot damage one of the bosses, so we need another weapon. And thankfully, Nemesis happens to be there. Also, I need to get out of Bushlands to get back to the rest of the game. And the easiest way to do it, because I still don't have Arthur's Key, is to just item quit there, and now this teleports me to Arthur's house, because it now corresponds to the teleporter. So this item quit thing is the basis of all of this game's glitches, for the most part. There are a couple of glitches that don't use it, but yeah. So I'm going to save here. Now, I need... One thing... Okay, so when you... The first boss we're going to kill is Undead Core. We actually can't kill a couple of... We actually cannot... So, part of the thing that this... What am I doing? Part of the thing that this run has to do is we need to do kill them continuously. We cannot kill a boss and then reset. So, that's actually why Heavy Press and Balos, the last two bosses of the game... Are actually killed last because there's no way for us to break out of hell. I have some theories on how it might be possible, but I have not managed to figure anything out. Also, okay, we got like the locket. Yeah, also we got locket. It just happened to be in Arthur's house. Don't worry about it. This run does it sucks. Now you're probably <laughs> wondering why I set up the second save file there. So in order to access graveyard, to get uh, Jack there, that's his name, to move, we need to trigger or get through the first Balrog encounter. But if we do that, we cannot encounter Balrog later. So, we set up a second file to do Balrog skip, skip, skip. Skip. Now, I'm gonna exit again. This is gonna happen a lot. Basically, an aim quit takes 18 seconds, and any movement, which would take us more than 18 seconds, is slow. So, we're going... Arthur's key happens to be in Graveyard, and also happens to be in Arthur's house. Apparently, Arthur got buried in his own house. Yeah, I can Arthur, respect that. No, Arthur locked himself out. Like, no, he didn't want said, anyone else to. Emma, it said Arthur's grave. All oh, right, that's where. That's why there were flowers there. So now we're in Mapinion's room, and so we need to get the Iron Bond because it's the only way to actually enter the prefab at the end of the game. So to do that, we need to acquire that from Curly, but Curly is not loaded in. Curly is not going to be loaded into Plantation because we haven't done all of the normal ending stuff. And we actually can't do a lot of the normal ending stuff. Furthermore, we needed to get Mapignon without actually killing it because we needed to kill us a boss later. Yes, yeah, save door. Uh... Hang on, I, just, um, I had to scroll down on my route and I got a little confused. Okay. So, now, you notice that we're saved in a very particular save point. It's convenient that the save point is as useful as it is because it's literally right here. So, we're going to do what we've referred to as the breakdown glitch, which is as simple as we teleport to an area where the normal ending takes place and we trigger the normal ending sequence. But when you close the inventory, it breaks whatever is trying to run. So we can just exit the normal ending sequence, which allows us to access to all of the major areas of the game for the most part. Yes, if you can tell in the map of the other screen, you can see that the areas are actually being loaded. Yes, but there's a problem when we're trying to get to Plantation. But the game, when you item quit, actually checks what script is loaded, not what area you're in. So when we get there, we're going to close the menu, and it's going to load the Amiga save point script. And we don't want that, but very conveniently, if the game reaches the end of a script when trying to run something... Also, I use the map system actually to move, but that's not why we collect it. We collect it to the... Yeah, it's just going to be... Actually, can we skip the map system? No, because we need to do the first thing. But, uh, what am I doing? So, yeah, also, seeing as the donation incentive got met, we're... Okay, so... We overflow because the game reaches the end of the script and just runs whatever's there. I'm going easy mode because there's a realistic risk. I have to jump over a trigger here or I can soft lock, and normally I do it quickly, but I didn't want to soft lock in a marathon run. I'm actually taking like a lot of like safer stuff than I normally would try. I like my movement isn't the best in general, so normally I would item quit here, but I'm not gonna do that because hey, people wanted the printing cap. And yeah, I'm... we're gonna get the CD hat. See, it is one of the exclusive items of this, of this version of the game. So I just need to not die here, because that would suck. So let's not die to that. Okay, that's the only thing I was worried about killing me. Because that actually does enough damage to just kill you with 3 HP. And it can be a little janky, because its movement is kind of random. So, this is an added area called Inner Wall. We're going to see none of it. It's because cool area, but it's we're going to see none of it. In a hunt- oh wait, that's not where I want to go. Actually, does this work? Yes, it does. Excellent. 
So this is small grave. And we're gonna get the hat. And we're gonna wear the hat. Because so, Lawson likes the the hats. So this is a pretty cap. Something you found in a secret grave. Equip it? Yes. Now we have the pretty cap on. Okay, so now I gotta actually do what I was here to do. Also, all the loading screens and the, the thing now has pretty cap, which is cute. Um, sorry, was, okay. So, now. So, we can, even though Curly isn't loaded, the script is always there, obviously, because that's just how the game works. So we're gonna steal the script here. And now we collected the locket for this reason. So, as I mentioned, the inventory now corresponds to the teleporter, and so we can teleport to the labyrinth. And now, very conveniently, they added a life capsule in this room, where this route would not be possible without this random life capsule they added. Yeah, that's one of the many random capsules uh, in Kid History 3D that don't exist in the original game. Now, this is a little... I did, I did make the thing. So there's a life capsule up here, and the life capsule happens to actually be curly. So we're gonna get the Iron Bond, which allows us to actually enter Prefab 2, and it's the only place we can actually save after Undead for the Doctor and Misery. And we're actually about set up to go fight our first boss, which is gonna be Undead Core. And I'm likely gonna mess up the way to kill it quickly, so that's gonna be fun. And we just gotta have Curly stop talking, please. And give us the rectangle. Why is Curly so chally now? So now we actually can't get out of here normally because uh, you need to have gotten Booster 2.0 normally from Booster because that sets the flag that the teleporter works. But thankfully, there's a reason why- so we are gonna set up save files in a couple of spots which are just really convenient for us to item quit him. And also- Oh, hi Booster! Hey, Floating Booster! He was Floating Booster, regular Booster, we can actually- what if I completely- I- this is a route change actually, like, recently, so I messed up. I just go through there. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see a lot of Professor Boosters in this run. They are just riding. Okay, so now... We're gonna go back to Plantation because we need to get to Balcony. Now, as you know, if you haven't done a bunch of sto random story stuff, you can't actually get to... To the Balcony. But thankfully, the script is just there in memory. So, we're just gonna trigger that script. But how do we trigger that script, you ask? Luckily, I got actually teleport. It's almost as if this version of the game was broken or something. Yeah, but hey, the no item quit categories are cool. I will get to those. I enjoy this game a lot. I unironically love this version of the game. Um, so we're gonna get the sand zone, and very conveniently, the sand zone places of us a very particular sign, which has a rather odd ID, which corresponds with the door, specifically the warp to last cave hidden. And we're gonna item quit because going through it with the camera broke it. Oh yeah, because of the normal ending breaks the camera. It just does. Yeah, since the normal ending is focusing the camera on enemies, it never restores the pointer to the camera back to quad. So a lot of rooms are gonna be aiming to the bottom, to oh, the no. top, to the top left corner. There we go. Or to random enemies. Nice boosting. You got boost power. So we actually don't want to save the file because we have to get back out, and it's just this happens to be faster. We're gonna put this file into wrong door. Um, we're gonna put this file into prefab for, and this is gonna sit here for the rest of the game. And you'll find out why at the end of the run. I mean, it also just happens to be really convenient. So as I mentioned, anything we can do faster than 18 seconds. I mean, 18 seconds is the minimum time. The loads can sometimes take a bit longer. Has 3DS. Yeah, Kids 3D is ca got kind of a reputation for its loading screens. It's not as terrible as Sonic 06 or that, but considering the original game pretty much has no loading times. So, as usual, we're gonna take the script from there. Hey, we're in the Doctor Room. We could go right and fight the Doctor, but that wouldn't be reverse boss order. So, we're gonna go here. And coincidentally, this door just happens to lead us right to Undead Core. And I'm gonna be killing the first boss of the run. And I missed the booster. Wait, do I have Nemesis equipped or Blade? I didn't check. Oh. So, for this fight, 
I'm going to... Technically, it's a little faster just to hit. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to hit... Uh, basically, I want to knock out one of them because if the core reaches the left side and one, both of them are alive, it will stay closed until one of them is knocked out. So that's slow, obviously. So I'm going to knock out Sue as quickly as possible. Sue is the one on the left. We haven't met her yet. We'll meet her in the past. There's stuff going on here, and there's a story in this game, and the story's cool, but the story's slow. This is why the lady's broken. Basically, every single oh. weapon in case 3 has a ammo limit of how many ammunition can be uh, on screen at the same time, and Blade only has one. However, Blade despawns immediately oh God, when it doesn't kill an enemy, so we can just completely... So we we can just stand in front of a boss oh and spam blade and just hit everything really nobody hard. Nobody watch! Nobody watch! This is my terrible. Oh my god. Also, child to a soundtrack. Also, because I'm uneasy, like, I'm naked at first dying. Oh, this is gonna be a very slow fight, unfortunately. But hey, I didn't level Blade to level 3, so that's good. That well, was a slow that's... fight. That's probably faster than if you played this game casually, but it's still a very slow fight. I can kill it before it moves even halfway back if I do it properly. This run actually used to get Spur until we had a vote to allow time attack, because it was just like, well, you can't ever get rid of the fact that you have time attack unlocked. So should we allow it? Because it allowed for some cool things. But unfortunately, you got rid of the Spur route. So, two things have happened right now. We killed Undead Core, and this did two things to the game. One, it set up the shaking of the screen, so you just see the screen but shake. Gonna shake for the, rest, the screen's gonna shake for the rest of the game in most areas. Yes. And also, new area! We actually have to go through this normally, because there's no way we can easily get through yeah, this. Yeah, we need to play the Metroid Escape sequence. Dun, 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 Also, we can just boost through these. But it's we are really not actually hard. solid. Oh my god, please. This movement. Not like my world record is good, but you know. Ah! No! <laughs> no! No! Well, we'll have to refight on Death Core. So, we're gonna go fight on Death Core. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go fight the first boss of this run. <laughs> this is why my. This is why the thing is generous, because I'm gonna make mistakes. So we're gonna go fight the first boss of this run. It's Undead Core. So Undead Core, um, we have to kill either Sue or Misery so that when the Undead Core reaches the left side, uh, though the the the, head, the presses are just instant death. So yeah, right here. It's gonna be first try. I'm gonna get it first try. Dying in the skip sequence, that's ma that's how running Super Metroid must feel like. Yeah, like it's it, it, it's now canon to- oh my god, how do I miss that twice? Um, okay, so nobody saw that last fight. Maybe, maybe I'll actually get to do it fast. See, it was all calculated because I wanted to do the fight fast. <laughs> okay. Cutscene! Thank you so much! Is this form dreadful? Honestly, this is the one boss in the game that might- could have looked a little bit better. Though, I mean, the main problem in this game is not the models, but the lighting. And also the fact that it seems like they didn't account for the fact that this would be on a radio screen. Yeah, we actually managed to decompile the models, and they have a lot more detail okay, that they this is dead. should. Is dead. Okay, let's see if I can get a good fight. Oh my god, no! That was too far back. No! Yep, I'm going to Oh my to god, please. I might actually get a decent fight here. No, no, no. Fucking. Hey! Almost there. 
Oh my god, I fell. I actually lost track of where I was. Aww. There we go. I could have done it a bit faster. Yes, that is a Zema. Okay, so as I, as I was explaining, now we're gonna do the escape sequence and we're not gonna die. Oh, also, this is the only automatic heal we get in the entire run. Also, one of the reasons I collected so much health is because I'm gonna forget to heal. I'm gonna forget to be safe. Yeah, safety strats, marathon, you know. It's what we're playing in e on easy. Yeah. Like, while I'm on easy, all the instant death stuff still is instant death. And, like, I accidentally tapped left while I was looking at my route, and that was enough to just kill me. But hey, I get to do the fun movement in this room again. Say, please! Save. No. I'm not gonna do that again. I guarantee I'm not gonna do that again. Please don't. Fun fact, we can actually collect enough health that we are not gonna die by one of those. But it's slow. So, here we're saving, and as you know, saves in this game mean that something's going on. So, if we walk left, we'll trigger the misery fight. And we also can't get up to the doctor fight, which is the next boss we have to kill in the order. Also, I should mention that a boss is defined by things that are called bosses in the credits. There's no arbitrariness to it. They're, they're called bosses in the credits, they're a boss. So here's the Doctor, and the Doctor is probably the hardest fight in the game as you're gonna see. I, I, I would make jokes about needing immense concentration. So the Crystal does one damage. The Doctor does, I think, two one easy, but I don't actually know. I missed the button, so I might not actually get the quick kill. Okay, I got the quick kill. So I'm gonna probably take damage the moment he changes forms. So here's phase two. The buff doctor? Oh, I missed the, You can kill him before the charge. I missed the quick kill, because I leveled down. Oh yeah, when you take damage, your weapons level down in this game. Yeah. The, um, the unbearable himboification of the doctor. So now as you notice, the way back down is sealed. So how do we how do we get back to misery? So we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna go through the escape, of course. Oh wait, that's sealed too, and we can't re-trigger the ended core fight. How do we get back? Oh hey, look, it's open again. So now we're gonna fight misery, which is kind of fun. A kind of a fun fight. So basically, I'm gonna jump into her. Her teleportation is random, but I'm gonna basically jump into her and mash the blade, which is, you know, more How or less. pretty much every boss is gonna go. Oh my god, no. Okay. I can only do 90 damage with the blade unless I happen to get, like, an absurdly lucky spawn where she basically spawns on top of me. Yeah, Missy also happens to have uh, damage caps. There is actually quite a few bosses. Oh. Quite a few bosses in this game have damage caps where they'll like become immune after you do a certain amount of damage. And that's misery. So we're done the first section of this run. We're done the gauntlet that's normally at the end of your casual playthrough. Uh, unless you're doing hell. Unless you're getting that best ending. So the way out is sealed, but you should get okay, these stairs are hard. These stairs are the actually the last boss of this game. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take them safe instead of fast. So as you know, this is gonna result. So now this is actually a different balcony map from the rest of the game. And so this is actually the reason we have to get Iron Bond, because we can't go back to escape. Escape would be the way that we could save, but this is why we have to get Iron Bond. But now we cannot get out. But luckily the door in this room is That's still just a door. Yes. So we're gonna go kill the tutorial boss of this game, which is, oh wait, no. I changed this part, because it's faster. Because you have to item quit here anyway, so it's faster. So... This door is just a door that has a script that says you can't get out of it. So we're just gonna go here. I... I... I'm gonna take... No! Oh yeah! Um... That's actually kind of bad. I would... Yeah, that, that's gonna happen. So, Nemesis actually works in the reverse, 
And if I'm we not that... We should actually explain weapon mechanics yeah, in Q3. Yeah, you explain weapon mechanics, because, like, this is not going to be an interesting yeah. plot of the random. So, weapon mechanics in Q3 have a very unique twist. Every time you kill an enemy or destroy a capsule, they are going to drop experience points in form of those triangle Doritos you've seen during the run. And collecting them increases experience for every gun. Once you've collected, once you've collected enough experience per gun, they are going to gain levels. In the general case, weapons become more powerful as you collect levels. However, in the case of Nemesis, it's actually the opposite. Nemesis level 1 is the most powerful weapon in the game, but Nemesis level 2 is the most useless weapon in the game. It actually shoots ducks. Like, it, it, it shoots ducks. It's the cutest weapon in the game. But Normally I like birds. It was, that's that's what, who we leveling refer to as the tutorial boss. It's a very hard boss. It's the red ogre. It act, you know how, how Arthur has a grave? That's who killed Arthur. Oh, I, I didn't really want to... I mean, we don't really use Blade. Oh no, because we're about to fight Machineon, so that kind of sucks. Wait, I can just take damage here, actually. Oh yeah, so uh, being on easy is actually a bit of a curse in this run. Please hit me. Thank you. Because the Blade level 3 is amazing casually, but it sucks in a speedrun. Because unlike le Blade level 1 and 2, it I cannot be easily spammed. way spam. down on my round notes. Okay. Also, as I mentioned before, collecting experience increases your collecting Doritos specific experience point and getting hit lowers them. So in certain parts when Amber collects experience, she is going to strictly take damage intentionally to give their web to give her weapons at a specific level. So now I'm back at Arthur's house, because you know, we've been over this, we've been over this. This is the thing that happens. Oh wait, no. Also, something we should mention right now is that because of the game is in a new state where it thinks we've actually allowed, um... This is normally the first thing you do in the run where you activate the teleport to a quarter. So, Map Pinion is, as you know, the place where you're supposed to fight. Now, we need to talk to the thing... Oh, god damn it. Uh, we need to talk to... I need to take damage here, so... Okay. That was not optimal damage taking, but you know. We need to talk to the Cthulhu with Curly loaded. We can't do that. Because the Cthulhu isn't, because Curly isn't loaded, so therefore the Cthulhu won't do it. Yeah, so the Cthulhu is different text, which won't set the ability for us to fight Mapignon. But, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do an invent, what we refer to as an inventory overflow, but basically it's the same idea where we're going to Load the scripts of two areas with the inventory open. Oh wait, I need to do this. We are going to load the scripts of the inventory with the inventory open. Also, because the file 2 does not have Arthur's key, we... Oh, I... File 2 does not have Arthur's key, so we're going to get at Arthur's key like this. Or, it's rather, into Arthur's house like this. So, we want to load the script of Arthur's house, and then load the script of the Cthulhu abode. And that will allow us to reach Mamiga Village with the inventory open. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to close the inventory, which is going to load... So Yamashita Farm, and this is the part where we're actually going to be making use of a lot of stuff that's unused in the game, but it's still in the game, and it's very convenient for the speedrun. So there, the, the game split scripts into head.sjs, which stores a lot of, like, classic functions like saving, and whatever area script. But, there are a couple of areas in the there are a couple of areas in the game where they actually have save scripts in them, presumably from a much older version of the game. So, Yamashita Farm is one of those. So we can trigger a save in areas without saves. Which conveniently, by, lo by warping into Mimika Village with the inventory open, we can now successfully item quit into... No, there's probably a faster way to do this kind of thing, then. Yeah! Oh, there, keep going. Hey, I just rerouted the game. I just found a 10 second sign to save. <laughs> Anyways, um... Wow, that, that actually would be a decent time save. <laughs> this is the problem with this because I keep, keep rerouting. Routing. You'll notice that I get confused a lot. I have rerouted this route, like, in the past couple of months, I have rerouted this route category, like, hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. Also, that's my favorite glitch in the run. We successfully saved that door. 
Did I actually save the door? I was talking, so I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. I assume I saved at the door. Yeah, you'll save at the door, don't worry. Yeah, she's safe at the door, we're safe. That's not what I want to do. I mean, it, it works, but this is slow. So I want yeah, plantation. Donation real quick? Oh, sorry. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. We have $10 from Anonymous who says, Love from the Baguette Restream, who is our French restream, twitch.tv slash baguette underscore restream. Nice. Awesome. So we're talking to Big Chungus here, and Big Chungus is actually Curly. Or the, the, the Cthulhu, but he thinks that Curly is right next to him. Let's not tell Big Chungus. So we actually need... So now we're in Plantation, because all the warps go to places in Plantation. So, hang on, this is the spot where I rerouted, so I need to actually read my thing. Okay, oh, right, okay. So, now we're saved in Storehouse. Now we're saved in Storehouse, and we need to- Oh wait, no, this is- I forgot I rerouted this. There's an important thing, there's an important detour here. So, this might seem slow, but it only seems slow if you don't realize how much faster Booster 2.0 is than moving normally. So we're gonna get Booster 2.0 on our second file. That's all. And now we're gonna reload and continue the run. I forgot to do this earlier. It's fine. Booster 2.0, like, that's about 30 seconds to do, and it saves a lot of time just for moving. Because we're gonna be making this climb a lot, so, you know, it's basically a Metroid game. Um... I have to actually press the button. No! <laughs> I'm like so faster during the run, this is amazing. I'm trying to like focus on like two things at once, and as you know, this goes off. <laughs> um, anyway, we are back in cemetery. And now we're not in cemetery. So we need to get to Map Pignon. And so we're gonna steal the door from that room. And now we're in Map Pignon's room, and I need to not die to Map Pignon. So this is actually the boss, which we collect Nemesis for. And we need to navigate, and we got the Mushroom Badge, which is not what we want. So it gives you the Mushroom Badge, you know, trying to trick you. And if you were a casual player who got tricked by it, I, f I feel your pain. So, Map Pignon is a very interesting boss. It's the smaller boss in the run. The smallest boss in the run. It's immune to Blade, and it's a competitive Pokémon. It hops, it does Rock Slide, then it does Iron Head, Rock Slide. There we go, quick killed. We didn't get to see Substitute, that was a very... That was actually faster than my world record. I mean, my world record is not a good run. Yeah, that was actually... Nemesis is super effective in this battle. I'm gonna keep the Pokemon jokes. Yes. Emma, <laughs> Emma, Emma. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go save in Mii Box, which is just the map name of this, I call that. People get confused by my red dots, and I'm just like, oh! What, what's me box? Oh, I it's the script name of this room. Okay, so now we need to go kill the sisters. And not the Gianna sisters. Um, yeah, we're gonna go kill the dragon sisters. So, in order to get there, we need to go to Destroyed Egg Corridor. But we can't actually get to Destroyed Egg Corridor without a script loaded. And so we have to go around the long way, because even if you haven't set the flag for Egg Corridor to be destroyed, Going around from outer wall leads to destroyed a corridor. Also, I'm excited because this is the first time a lot of people are gonna see the sisters fight. Because Kiwi Street speedruns actually have the tradition to skip them, with them because the only way to trigger them is by obtaining an item that best ending doesn't get, and 100 percent can just skip them by being very fast. So if you are not familiar with the sisters, you might be a little surprised. She, they are technically one of the two optional bosses in the game. They are allegedly a boss. They are allegedly a boss. So, Outer Wall, the best track in the K-Story 3D soundtrack. Which also, the the, the, the soundtrack is That's really good. That's a weird way to spell Labyrinth Fight. I mean, Labyrinth Fight is just a good track in every... Labyrinth Fight is a jam. This game's soundtrack is amazing, and my honestly, my saddest thing with the glitch runs. Also, hey, we're gonna see for like two seconds one of the added areas, a quarter to her. Yeah, in previous routes, we actually used to go through it. Yeah, and then I was like, wait, no. <laughs> Item putting is fast. Is really <laughs> so, yes, we actually have to do some platforming. Imagine that. 
And that's the end of the platforming for a bit. Okay, so it's actually we could actually get super missiles earlier, but collecting this would result in us getting a second missiles, which would mean that missile pickups for the rest of the game won't do it. But more importantly, okay, I actually need to focus a bit. This properly. There's a faster way to do this, but I'm bad at it. One day I'll bother learning it. But there, there's so much time save in other spots that it's not really worth me practicing. Hey, I got it faster than usual. Why am I like having like good things and then just dying a random press? Like why am I actually doing things like decently? Okay, so now we need to get back to Arthur's house. Our next boss is gonna be Iron Head. And if you played this game casually, you're gonna notice that the game the fight is a little different than usual. <laughs> just a little, just a tad. So This is also going to be one of our next uses of an un- Oh, also, if you notice that we got to Sand Zone from Arthur's house earlier, there's unused warps in Arthur's house. I assume it was used as, like, a dev room at some point. That's what I have to guess. So now, we're actually going to go there again, and there's an unused warp in Sand Zone that we're going to take advantage of. I need to walk left because I'm not in the Mimika save point. So we're in Sand Zone. Hi, Sandzone. Hi, Curly. Hi, Curly. We'll be seeing Curly again. She's fine, don't worry. And now... We're going to go to Iron Head, because there's just a warp there for some reason. So, something important about warps in Key Story is that every warp in Key Story has the information to tell the game where we have to spawn in the next room, and the direction we are facing when we enter a warp is also a direction... Bye, Iron we Head! Are in which we are going to be facing when we enter the next room. Since we enter the, this room facing left and we entered it with an unintended warp, we were placed in the middle of the room yeah. facing left rather than being placed oh. at the left edge of the room facing right, which is how it would normally happen. But the bounds of where we're allowed to move in the room depends on our current position. <laughs> Therefore, I we have extremely limited space to move and I... And the Iron Head AI relies on our face orientation, so the Iron Head AI teleports, gets overall broken. I got confused again because I changed the right here again. Okay, so now we're we're gonna see Iron Head again. Iron Head's a friend. Iron Head's a buddy. Iron Head doesn't get actually marked as dead, but it's required to kill it because it's in the ending credits. That's all there is to it. It's in the ending credits, so we have to kill it as a boss. Yeah, imagine if we try to collect the alien medal in this run. I would rather not. <laughs> I would rather not. I mean, the fastest route for this game in theory involves being at 3 HP. You never collect the life capsule because it's slow. Don't do that. Don't subject yourself to that run though. Please don't. Okay, so there's just a chance we can just randomly die here and there's nothing I can do about it. We didn't randomly die because Iron Head starts moving before you're able to move. And can just kill you. Also, so there's just a warp to core in there for some reason. Your guess is as good as mine why it's there. I mean, it hints that the sequence of this game was very different at some point. Which we know it was. Also, normally you would shoot this with super missiles, but I don't have super missiles. And there was probably a spot where I could get... Where would I get missiles level 2? I don't think there's a spot where I could get missiles level 2 to actually shoot it. I could probably do it with Nemesis, but like I haven't practiced that. I'm still in the space where I'm constantly rerouting this run. So, like, we'll see. Anyways, we gotta do this as intended, sort of. Oh, also, one of the unfortunate parts of this game where I will actually agree with a lot of people and say that K-Story 3D has some issues. So water is laggy. Yeah, water is probably the laggiest element in the run. This route, fortunately, keeps leaving waterway, which is the single laggiest room in the entire game. So, we're... <laughs> I just kind of... I don't know. Okay, so I'm not going to do this fight fast, most likely. Because I don't want to embarrass myself by drowning. Um, we have Nemesis, which you're very much not supposed to have at this point. And that all has a very safe strat here that's still fairly decent fast.
As you can see, in order to avoid collecting Doritos with her turn gun, she can just swap guns at any point. Yeah. Also, Kiddies 33D has the weapon swap, swap from the, every other version of the game. Mumbler donated twenty dollars and said, "With that surprise, I'm safe. No. There's plenty of time for another run." Which was alluding to the fact that your any percent bonus run is now met. Oh my god! Oh okay. yes! So the any percent run of this game is a sight. Anyway, that was I'm, cool. I'm actually really hyped. <laughs> yes, we got any percent. Also, I did not get the quick kill. I did not. You're supposed to fall in the water afterwards, so you drown faster, and I obviously did not drown that. So, we need to drown here in order to proceed with the story. You're gonna see the saddest moment in the entirety of Kiwi's story. So if I collect the tow rope, Jenka's gonna talk. And we actually don't need to collect the tow rope, because in this version of Cave Story, in this category, Curly's just gonna get herself out of this. Don't worry, we trust Curly, she's gonna be okay. And we also don't want Jenka to talk to us, there's an animation there. Curly, no! <laughs> also, you're gonna see my favorite part of this game, La why? Oh, also something I forgot to mention. So this game actually runs internally at 60 FPS for the logic, but the game actually runs at 30 FPS, and that means that it accepts inputs at a rate of 30 FPS, which is kind of relevant, but I haven't actually run into like issues where that ruins the run at all. Okay, so we are out of core. I went to the wrong spot, you know. It's Cave Story 3D. Also, this run involves all three save files, but not all categories in this game involve using three save files. Yeah, this is probably the most complex run in the... I mean, this this so run far. exists because a marathon here was happening called CSM, and I was like, I want to submit Cave Story 3D, but I don't want to just submit like the boring like best ending. So I routed this basically for a marathon. Because I wanted to show off like everything possibly broken about this run. And this does a good job of it. So, hi, Booster. Now we're gonna go try and fight Balrog 3. But so, Balrog 3, we need to have Curly in that room. But in order to have Curly in the boulder chamber to talk to her to actually move the rock, we need to feed her to a cure all. And to get the cure all, we need to get that from a chest, which instantly triggers a boss and is the only way to trigger that boss. And of course, that boss is meant to be found in this category after we heal Balrog 3. Also, if you're wondering why we don't just trigger bosses in other runs, in other rooms, we can't because rooms actually have a flag and tell them what bosses should be loaded in that room. I don't know why I'm going up the left side. I don't do that till later. So here's the boulder chamber. But as you know, things that happen in this game are just scripts. And if we know how to get access to those scripts, and coincidentally, the flowers in this room have a very specific item ID. And as you've noticed, uh, there's a lot of things kept in there. Keys, lockets, Curly. As, as I told you, Curly's okay, see? So now we've triggered the thing that tells us that we can interact with the left side of that boulder. The door in there will actually not let us, but now we're gonna go say hello to our friend Balrog. And talk to Ghost Curly again. Because Ghost Curly is fun. C Ghost Curly will eventually become visible, and you'll see that, don't worry. Ghost Curly won't be a ghost for the rest of the run. I guess that does mean Curly died, huh? Curly's now a ghost. I did it. Well done. I don't actually know what the optimal for that is. If someone wants to make it so I can task 3DS games, I would love that. So as I mentioned, uh, Kiwi Story 3D error handling is extremely generous. Blade behind you. I need to focus first. Blade appears behind you. Mention that. How about Blade? That, and here's something very important, every weapon spawns in a different location in the game, and weapon spawns right behind oh. you. So the fastest way to kill bosses is to actually look face behind them. Balrog just wants a hug! <laughs> I obviously just wanted to show you how Balrog 2 attacks and messed up this fight. Also, a really unfortunate thing is that uh, you can actually pick up XP and speedruns, so finishing a fight that drops XP with Nemesis can kind of suck. Luckily, there aren't a lot of situations where that happens. So now we've done Balrog, and we could go through there and hear the best track in the game, but I'm sorry. Okay, so we now pick up Super Missiles, which are important, 
We need those. There's a quick kill on the final boss we can do with these. Now I'm going to be safe and save, even though I absolutely don't need to on easy difficulty. Uh, right, I need to... So now that we have talked to Booster in Thing, and we've technically gotten Booster 2.0 again, this doesn't actually do anything. We've gotten Booster 2.0 again, which means that this teleporter works. Because I guess the lore is that, you know, he uses the teleporter there, he fixes it. When you go to it, it says, like, it's broken and stuff. Yeah, people keep complaining about how the Booster survive, and I think the answer is extremely obvious, like... Life is worth living at any cost. Shouts to the Swapper. That is a good game. Anyways, that's not important. Um, I mean this, but you know. I did it! Well so, done. if we walk left, we'll trigger the boss fight, but the trigger that actually loads the boss into that room is further left, and there's a, there's a gate that appears. And that gate does not let us continue. Luckily, item cutting there and entering this door brings us to the clinic. We're gonna collect the cure-all, because it's quicker. I'm gonna save for safety, unfortunately. I really don't want to save here. Like, everything in my body is telling me don't save. For certain people... Yes. ...who will yell at me if I don't save. If I don't at least attempt to be safe. I really think one of the harder section is in run casually, and even in speedruns. Those Goldie are take one hit of blade, but they can be very annoying. Although you know, there's a lot more bugs here. Yeah. I don't like bugs. Yeah, this is very important. Why there are why are there so many bugs in this run? Did you remember the game casually of crossing with stress speedruns? This room has bugs, but it doesn't have as many, and they are certainly not armored. Why does this happen? The game has an special flag hey, that I happens first, I only after you defeated the core, which makes this room have even more bugs, but that's only supposed to happen after you defeated Monster X. However, since we are doing things in the rest of order, this flag is set before we kill Monster X, and it makes this fight even harder than it already is. Monster X has two phases. The first phase involves hitting the four weak points. It's actually possible with Spur to cycle. kill this in two things, and I don't think it's possible to kill it in two without the Spur. And then you just shoot the thing, and you kill the cat. Cat! Okay, so the cat has been killed. Don't worry, he'll be all right. That was kind of slow movement, but I wanted to kill all the bugs because I do not like bugs. I really don't like bugs. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because this game is buggy. Hey, hey, I like that kind of bug. I like that kind of bug a lot. So just wait till I get a copy of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> 3D. <laughs> I mean, I own Ocarina of Time 3D. Okay, now we are finally getting the cure all. And we're triggering Beta Barbara. And there we go, that's Pooh Black done. Da -da 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 so now we need to get out of Labyrinth, and getting out of Labyrinth would be slow normally. Do I take the health? Do I need the health? No. I have 35 HP, that's easy difficulty. If I die to Taroko. Okay, so now we need to get back, because now we're gonna go fight Taroko Plus. And it's not this fight in the entire game. But in order to get to Taroko Plus, we need to collect all the dogs. And that is very slow. And to get down to the bottom part of the sand zone, we would need to... To get down to the bo What am I doing? Get out of my way, bugs. I really don't like bugs. Um, and... Yeah, we, we usually need to collect the five dogs. And also to kill Omega in order yeah. to open the. I mean, we could do it with them killing Omega, but it would be very slow and we have to use some setups. But if you've been paying attention to anything, you know that all things like that in this game are just scripts. And if we can access the script somehow, we can do things. And as you've noticed, I'm saving very suspiciously right here. So, there's two things we need to do. So, we need to get to Last Cave, but not just any Last Cave. We need to get to Last Cave hidden. Now, if I leave here and I go to Last Cave, that's not Last Cave Hidden. They have different scripts, and there's actually an Enemy's Life Capsule in Last Cave Hidden that isn't set to appear. But, but if we can access that door via this file, it will lead us to Last Cave. I don't know. Okay, I did not get hit. I, I kind of wanted to get hit, just because... Also, my movement in this section is gonna be suck. It is actually the life capsule in Sandstone. Uh, four. The, the 
life capsule that's unused. So, this will now lead us to Last Cave. Hidden. Which is important. So, if you've been paying attention, if we can access a script, we can just load, into, load it, make it run. Because the game, technically it has error handling, it will stop. It will stop searching. But then it just runs whatever's there. Oh, no! Th this was RNG menu. Yeah, RNG menu. So this life capsule will now overflow us to this script, which is the script to the second version of Jenga's house, which is a separate map, which is very convenient. I don't need this life pot, but someone will yell at me if I don't take strafe straps. Yes, and that someone will be me. Yes. It, unfortunately, I mean, I'm not gonna say unfortunately. In, and I live with this person. In PV, in World Record at the Runs, though, the life pod is actually useful because you can avoid collecting a lot of health by just yeah. collecting if, the life If pod. you were, say, running this and you're like, this this run looks rather daunting. Well, keep in mind, you can get like 200 health during the item grind section, and each, each life capsule loses about six seconds. Now, you can skip, if you're going to collect any amount of health from there, you can skip half of it if you were collecting more than three life capsules because collecting that life pot takes about 20 seconds. I haven't actually timed it. Oh, I have level three, never mind. I forget where I would use it next. Do I heal? No. Healing is slow. I should never die to this fight. So, Taroko plus is basically Taroko's gonna get fed the red flowers. The red flowers turn the Mika's into like. Oh well, yeah, this game has a story. Yeah, there's a story. Play the game casually. You'll get the story. Don't. This is just speedrun. And it's wonderful. Please do it. It's yeah, like it, it is. Even if I didn't speedrun it, it would be one of my favorite games. So Taroko's gonna get the red flower. Red flower turns into a new killing machine. We're gonna see King die. We haven't actually met King yet. King's the one who gives us the blade, but we already have the blade. So we're gonna get two. Sadly, we can't do a wield. It would be cool, though. If Blade's so good, how oh. comes there's no Blade 2? I mean, I have Blade 2. So, we got, Taroko will jump semi-randomly. There's ways you can trigger it, but we don't have the fireball to trigger it. And we actually want Taroko to jump once. Perfect. And now Taroko's right next to the door that we need to leave through. Yeah, Thorok is very much not fight. meant to be <laughs> fought with Blade. I mean, I could probably do that fight a little bit better, but like, it's good enough. So, King dies. Uh, can I get no! a sad. What are, what are the, the sad. Whatever, I don't know Twitch things. Can I get an F in the chat, please? Thank you, thank you. I'm a professional streamer. Yeah, but the issue with this is that after this fight, we're gonna send back to Labyrinth. But now. Before in this category, before I rerouted literally two days ago, where I rerouted a bunch of stuff in this category, um, we would go through glitchless until we get to a save point in a room. Because this room's doors actually do not use the regular scripts. So, normally we do that, but as you've noticed, I'm not doing that. And as you notice, this game is a little broken. So, Arthur's house has a teleporter in it, and that teleporter can be accessed with things other than just the thing. And I want my robot buddy to teleport me. Oh, that is the wrong room. I, I assumed that that robot would also correspond to the script, but it's not. Now we know. So we just want to teleport anywhere because that will get us back to Arthur's house quickly. So now, as you remember, we were at Bushlands earlier and it was a little bit scary. I mean, not so scary on easy difficulty because you can take two hits, but... Um, oh yeah, I should mention what easy difficulty does. It reduces the damage of most things. Usually it's half, but not always, and sometimes it doesn't actually reduce the damage. <laughs> so, what am I doing here? I didn't click... Oh right, boulder chamber. Okay. So I'm gonna go to boulder chamber here, because a lot of the, like, where I'm saving has to do with specifically what things trigger what scripts in that room. So, I'm gonna go over to Boulder Chamber, because it happens to correspond to a very specific, not specifically a door, but rather one of the scripts that that door can run. Because if we trigger the script for that door, it, the game will tell us that we do not have the key for that room. But now we need to get to Bushlands, and we don't have a teleport to Bushlands. So, as you remember, we collected the map system much earlier in the run on this file. Hey, Bushland. Because, Emma, we're one full section in the room. All right. Because you're... Uh, I am going to Graveyard for some reason. 
So as you remember, we collected the map system because the map system happens to correspond to that. And as you remember, Yamashita Farm has a new safe scripts. Now, if we were to just map teleport to Bushlands, we would not actually be able to save the script from it because we need that script to get to the gum key room. I loaded it wrong. No, this is the correct file. Oh, you're right. I got ahead of myself and somebody just saved the run. <laughs> somebody just saved the run. Um, hang on, I can save this really easily. Uh, did it kill Torko, save the lever, and quit. Okay, I can fix this easily. Okay, so I actually need to kill Omega. I got way ahead of myself, so I'm excited. And yeah, this run is complicated. <laughs> I'm like having to keep track of like a dozen things in my head. Pretty sure this door should work for this. Perfect. So now I'm not gonna go kill to Bushlands. Yeah, we're still missing two bosses. Who knew? Yeah, as as like they're allegedly. I just really did not want to kill Curly. Like, can you can you fault me for that? Oh my god. We'll be fine. Curly will return in Avengers. Oh wait, but we Curly's dead though. We, we've seen Ghost Curly. Proof that Curly has died. Oh right, I have. I kind of don't want that. There we go. I actually really have no idea how the best way to move through this area would be. I gotta like sit down and figure that out at some point. Okay, so Omega. As you remember, Omega like has two phases. It has a phase where it's gonna pop out of the ground and shoot some balls at us. And it has a phase where it's gonna leap around. So, Bye. the second phase is slow, so I skipped it. <laughs> as, as you can tell, you're very much not... Like, you're gonna notice that the bosses are gonna have very little health. And yeah, that's a thing, that's a thing. Like, they... They certainly didn't expect you to have played at this point in the game. There we go, I got played level 2 again. Perfect. Also, yay! Platforming in our platforming game. Imagine platforming in our platforming game. There's actually no way to skip this platforming section, which is nice, because I enjoy the booster thing. There's a reason why I'm not good at it, as you'll notice. There's not a lot of platforming in these runs. There's actually a category where I call it time attack percent, where it, you can take the time attack file out of time attack and beat the game with it. So we're gonna go fight Curly, Ghost Curly. Oh no, it's Ghost Curly and the clones that pop out of nowhere. <laughs> hey, Curly's alive. Oh, I, I actually didn't know you could make her walk left. That's, that's never happened before. <laughs> Marathon first. Yes, we're gonna dispose of the Mamiga. Cause saying no is slow. Cause not only does she have to trade for the machine gun, which we can say yes to, and the game will tell us we got machine gun, but we did not get machine gun. Nyum. And but she also gives us health in this version. Nyum. Cause one of the many things that this game changed is it added a lot of health. Because if you remember playing this game casually, the game is hard. All right, I, got, I healed, even though it was only for 18 health. No, I want to save in Boulder Chamber. You know what's scary? There is a world where this could world record. Actually, no, 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 not quite. Like, if you're wondering how unoptimized this run is, I've never, no, I did not neom. I did not neom. Hi, Klaus. Okay, so. Now we're going to Bushlands. Now we're doing the Bushlands setup. So, if you're paying attention, we can use the map system that we got at the beginning of the run on this file. And this is why we collect map system. There just isn't a better time to collect map system on this file. Real quick, I want to plug the Classic vs. Story Visuals Bidwar that's going to close probably relatively soon here. Uh, yes it is. Uh, yes. It will close probably after Balrog 2. So now, this is not what I want. So now I'm going to... <laughs> I 
Oh. Now I'm gonna get confused for a second and then find my place again. Yeah, in this game, in this run, everything is confused except the game. The run yeah. is confused, the, what, the commentators are confused, the stream watchers are confused, but the game is not confused. Like, running this game required me, like, learning a lot of exactly how this game works. Also, a small little side, we are going to... This door actually exists, like, right here. For some reason. And we're gonna see me Miller, because obviously... So now that we have the save point in Fishlands, I actually wanted to get a small boost there, but I didn't. It's a little precise to get it, because you actually save wherever you were. And now, use the gum key, because that corresponds to exactly the script. And now, if you remember, Balrog 2 is a kind of tricky fight. It's not. Wait, did I never collect the Zoomer missile? I did collect this. Okay, good. So we're gonna face the bullets boss in the run? Nah. But it's a friend. No, Balrog 1 is the coolest boss in the run. Yeah, but this one is also a friend. Frog! Frog! You know, sometimes you can actually two cycle this, but I messed it up. So there's a damage cap, but we do so much damage that we can basically ignore the damage cap. Because the damage cap will stop it from taking damage, but it doesn't happen instantly. Frog has been defeated. So now, as you remember, we collected the rusty key at the start of the run. And that allowed us to do some like slightly faster oh, I missed all. That allowed us to do some like slightly faster breakdown glitches. Because it happens to be one of the items that corresponds to. Just for safety, we're gonna collect this life capsule. It gives one HP, but. For absolutely no reason, don't worry. Um, so. What's I saying? Okay, so we're gonna activate this. We collected the rusty key so we could get into here. Yes, we did know it was the Sioux. We totally know what you're talking about, friend. So Yeah, we didn't skip the section of the game at all. I actually don't know how to like do this fight like fast in this for in this category because normally you would jump on its head and use fireball. But we don't have fireball, so So like and you can't shoot down while standing. Anyways, there's Malcolm's question to the floor, but talking to him is slow. Helping helping people is slow. I would recommend it in non-speedrun settings. But helping oh wait, no. So we get, now, we want to get to Igor, but to actually access Igor, we would need to get the ID card, close the thing, and as you know, that's slow, so you, and as you know, this game is broken, so, oh, I sh just an occurrence, the, the reason we're playing on English is because this is patched in the Japanese version, because the Japanese version actually came out six months later. So, as you know, it, the game is broken, so we're gonna go, we're gonna, for the second time, activate the a Corridor War. On this file. Meow. So we're gonna allow teleportation and we're gonna go to Egg Quarter. Because as you know, that's gonna allow us to steal its doors. And we like stealing doors, we are not the No Doors Collective. Um Yeah, we like doors in this game. We skip them, but we like them. I mean sometimes we just walk through a sign. So now there are doors in that room, and as you know, we can steal doors. Now, hey, we're gonna save Sue, because if we don't save Sue, we can't actually enter the save room, which would allow us to save after the boss that we're about to fight. Oh, I was supposed to say no, because it's faster, but I didn't, because I was not looking at my stump. I do that a lot. Yum. Okay. Da -da -da. So, Igor is the second hardest boss in this game. Okay, so she has escaped somehow through the lightning fence. Shh, don't tell Igor we're here. So, Igor is hard. Bye! He moved away, so I stopped doing damage because I literally looked away while I was fighting. Where did I put my water? <laughs> I'll bring you some water later. Okay, so that's Igor done. But we can't get through because there's the, ele the electric gate. Also, I healed for some reason. Um, so there's an electric gate. I saved, right? Yes. Okay. 
um, electric gate, etc, 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 etc. So we need to get back to Arthur's house. But if we go, we could normally item quit there, and you would expect that. But if we leave through the teleporter transition in a quarter now, we will get a very long cutscene. So we leave through Bushlands instead. And it's just convenient. I mean, if we didn't have to have it save in Bushlands, it would be more convenient, but you know. Also, hi, Wolster! Also, also, Jack's in there for some reason. So we get some more story because Sue has been locked up. Hey, no, for escaping other locks! This time they'll keep her trapped. So, as. Now, we actually would have to collect Locket even if. We weren't. Even if we weren't doing the, the Labyrinth Teleport, we actually would have to go collect Locket right now because that is what would trigger this. this fight being active. So, now, this is the hardest boss in the game. This is the absolute hardest boss in the game, and I don't know how I'm going to manage this. We are going to need some quiet. Yeah, I need, I need, I need to be able to focus for this fight. Done. So you're expected to have level one polar star in this fight. Level two, you're extremely lucky. I mean, you could like grind for level three if you really wanted to, but you're not going to do that. But yeah, okay, so we have killed all of the bosses except for Hell. So I need to know uh, if I'm doing classic or story. Yeah. Refreshing the page right now, and it will be classic. That is fantastic, because you guys just voted to make the game look worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, the classic sprites in this game are not the actual classic sprites from the free world release, but rather are the... Upside the sprites from the Cave Story We Were port well, that could later be also used in Cave Story Plus and pretty much all subsequent versions of the game. This is not. I'm going the wrong. I, I forgot. Anyways, so we need to get back to the escape sequence. But luckily, so Thorn Room is all just one room, and it just happens to lead to the second version of Balcony. If uh, it leads to the second version of Balcony, if you are in the middle of the escape sequence and. As you might know, we have been in the escape sequence all this game. Also, if you wondered why we don't use Breakdown Glitch after a point, I can actually show that at some point. But basically, after we triggered the escape sequence, using Breakdown Glitch would soft lock. So we are now in hell, and this is... We cannot do any... Like, we have to play the game as developers and test... Oh, wait. But I have to reset. Because classic. So you voted for the game, look at you, you, you did this. You did this. Okay, I actually need to focus a bit. Because... So in classic mode, the only thing that changes is to have the characters being sprites. Everything else is still modeled as the as history 3D. And they are awfully blurry for some reason. This is really strange. No! No! <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, at least we know this running in world record pace. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, because world record's 112 something. Anyway, Hell is going to be pretty much as soon as exactly as you see it in other Q story best ending runs. But worse, because I'm not the greatest at this game. Because I don't, like, I'm. I... Q story requires a lot of mashing, and that hurts my hands. Hey, look, as I said, Curly's okay. Also, we mentioned in, in our situations, uh, or we should point out to that timer in your corner. So basically, as we mentioned before, the game is running at 50 FPS, but it's actually playing at 30 FPS. However, they forgot to update the counter to account for this difference in frames, and therefore the timer is awfully slow. It's very strange. Like, it's very strange. Like, why does it work like that? Who knows? I mean, they're, they were probably trying... From what I understand of this game's development, like, they threw, like, it was a bunch of people who didn't have much experience with 3D working on a 3D game, and as far as I know, like, they were putting out fires left and right. Yeah, and that also included Daisuke uh, Kamaya himself, who had very little who experience with this game. Character. Also, this is a good time to shout some of the, how the, to talk about the story of this run. 
This 3 3D was known to be broken for a really long time. Yeah. However, nobody actually exploded that brokenness besides having some 6 minutes to 7 minutes universal runs. Which for reference... No, it's like 15 minutes when I found the game. Which for reference is still reasonably fast considering the normal end run for the original Kiwi story is about 40 minutes. You can do some like cycle skips here, but I just kind of want to play it safe. Also, there's a new light capsule up there. However, the um, true brokenness of Kiwi 3D wasn't found until this woman, Amber, started running the game. I just, I actually like really liked it. It actually was upsetting me for a bit, like nobody cared about like Mononquist friends. Uh, but then I like found the beauty of how fun this game is broken. Okay, so Nemesis can be neat to have here because we can actually kill the Shrew Mostly Bowser. Double Nemesis just destroys the boss. Also, there's a skip here, but I've never been able to actually get it on 3D. And you go back to Nemesis on 3. And I actually don't know how to do it. <laughs> like, it, it's not really been... No, learning how to do that has not really been a priority. I yeah, did not get the, the play Blade Level 2, which is good, because I don't want Blade Level 2. I mean, hey, considering the many... Like, considering how hard this game would have been to, like, make for people with no 3D. Like, it looks impressive, considering this was made by people with no experience making 3D games. On a very tight deadline. Anyway, here comes the final boss. <laughs> the thing everyone here came to see. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> it's not Sans Undertale. I could have replaced the music. I know how to do that. You know I know how to do that. He says, kill me or I will kill you. And unfortunately for him, I enjoy like I enjoy living. So that's phase one. I I don't need to do this, but I'm gonna be safe at some point here and use the light capsule. And sorry, use the light pot. Or like I should be fine here, but I really would not want to lose the run. All right, I have, I have, I, I have birds right now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the light pot so that you don't get mad at me. I really don't need to use this. But my wife will get angry. Anyway, this fight is very standard. It's, no! It can be done with some casual strats. There's like a fast strat for this, but I haven't bothered to learn it. Let's... Like, once I finally have like a finalized route, I'm probably gonna be like, actually... Also, there's a quick kill here that we're gonna do. Do you notice this doesn't do very much damage? This is not time. This is not, not time. time. Time for this game is on the... Final textbooks before the credits. Yeah. This is because, unlike every other version of Q3, you can just create its warp. Yeah. And we want it to account for the difference. Yeah, I'll probably be learning the stand on top strat soon. Because, like, there just hasn't... Like, I've been rerouting the game so much. Though, I'm actually working on a new category where... I wanted to focus on movement, and it's gonna be like, no major skips, no weapons. But anyways, that is what it is. So, like, now we're through the game, I kinda wanna give a like, small shout out before we go into the any percent run. Like, this run, like, yes, I was the one who found the game and like, broke it, but like, I was like, sort of starting to figure it out, but there was one person who gave me the one very vital piece of information I needed to break this game, to, like, absolutely destroy this game. And that's Perry Winkle, a member of the Cave Story and Cave Story Plus communities. And if they had not told me um, how the buffer in Cave Story exactly works. how the buffer works, and specifically if the buffer is never cleared, I would never have known this. I mean, I probably would have eventually figured it out. But like, that enabled me to break the entire game. And yeah, so shout to Perry to the Cave Story. Time is coming up. Time. Time. This is actually like six minutes off the world <laughs> record, which should tell you how much I have to still do on optimizing this game. Anyways, so we have an any percent run to do. So as you've noticed, this is a long category, but what if you wanted to play a lot less of the game? 
What if you wanted to play a lot less of the game? What if you wanted to beat the game in three minutes? And like 45 seconds of that is the ending cutscene. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna wait for the credits. I'm gonna go to my home menu. I'm gonna close the game. I'm gonna reload the game. And we're gonna do an any percent run. Yep. Actually, before I do the any percent run, before I do the any percent run, I really wanted to show why we can't do breakdown and it's gonna take all of 20 seconds. There, there's a very broken reason why we can't do breakdown again. And it will take me all of like 30 seconds to show. Uh, I mean, you did come in way underestimate, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, I am gonna do that then. Yeah, I noticed that. Like, I actually expected this to go much worse than it did. So, yeah, I still think Run tend to be generous because it's easily possible for things to go wrong. Okay, so we're gonna do the breakdown glitch, and well, let's let's not mention what happens at all. Like, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, so also, breakdown glitch. I appreciate that very non-specific amount of HP. I'm not supposed to mention it. Like, I'm a what are you, 12? <laughs> I'm the joke ruiner for this run. Okay, so we're gonna go over to a quarter. So, like, where where do you want me to stop? Which part of the normal ending? Where should I stop? Like, should I stop at sand zone, bushlands, plantation, core? Where do you want me to stop? Core. Okay, I'll stop at core. And you're gonna see why we can't use breakdown. I don't know why this happens, and nobody else seems to know why this happens. This is one of the mysteries of Kyoto Street that we have yet to figure out. I, uh, it's just actually it makes the routing far more interesting. So like I'm glad that this happens. Okay, so we're gonna get the core because somebody wants me to do it core. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the screen to fade in. Niam! Wait, why did we go right on this map? Why did we go right? Why is core spawned again? I have to go on the planet needs me. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that just happens for some reason. And the camera will keep going out like that for some reason. I don't know why. It sure is a thing that happens. <laughs> what just needed to go back to this planet? <laughs> like, it sure is a thing that happens. Okay, so we're gonna do any percent. And now, if you thought that, like, the thing is, the thing was really complicated, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We're gonna play on hard mode. So, we gotta go through the opening, we gotta go through the opening. We didn't do the timer for this, for this run! Oh, I'm not gonna get world record. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the life capsule unnecessarily so I can't get world record now. Even though I would have to retime it anyways because we use milliseconds. Like, <sighs> I mean, technically we use. Why doesn't speedrun.com. Oh, wait, there's no life capsule because they picked hard. The, as if, in case you haven't figured it out, the difficulty setting does not matter. Hard mode just removes all of the life capsules and all of the missiles. Except for one life capsule. I actually don't know if it removes the HP that you get, like, passively. I don't think it does. So I guess technically hard mode in case Story 3D is easier, but, like... If you want, if you want the game to be as hard as possible, like, go play one of the plus versions at 60 FPS on like 3 HP. That's the hardest you can make the game on yourself. Because the original runs at 50 FPS. No, Amber, you're forgetting something. If you want to make the game really hard, you can just play an X-Engine. Oh, yeah. An X-Engine <laughs> is an open source version of Cave Story that is incredibly inaccurate. Oh, sorry, but the documentation specifically says that... It's no, very it's, accurate. It's, it's very accurate. Stop complaining. It, it's not. <laughs> It's it's not. I looked into trying to like fix it and no. 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 Nope. It, it would be easier to start over, which people did. I mean, to be fair, it's just it's a disassembly, but you know. Anyways, so we're in Amiga Village, but actually I've changed my mind. I want to play a different game. I want to play Time Attack. I want to play Time Attack. So we're gonna go play Time Attack. Definitely with the inventory open, so nothing weird is going on here. I need to go play Time Attack. Let's go into Arthur's house. Now I changed my mind. Let's do any percent. This will never get old to me. Never. Also, we're on normal mode again. Don't worry. We're going to end on a different difficulty. We're on normal now. So we started on hard. We're now on normal. Yeah. 
<laughs> now we're on easy mode. And now we're in the normal ending. Uh, that's it. That's that's any percent. I mean, we got a timing would end on the last the thing, but we're not actually timing this. Yeah, so Quo's just visible because the game never made him invisible because we entered at the wrong spot. Also, that friend. Friend. Anyway, Blake, your story. This game is also, you can see Quo like fall in the corner there. Yeah. No, no, this is mo this is story, not classic. Anyway, please go play cute. Right? Explosion! Shouts to all the kids. Shouts to the small but... There are three Cave Story 3D runners. Let's not only answer this. There are three active-ish Cave Story 3D runners. And what was the last time you did a run? When I rerouted any percent, you had world record for 20 minutes before I got around to actually running my new route. <laughs> she is still like... No, I is still here world record and, and that's time. Right back. Yeah, so she had world record for all 20 minutes before I did my own run of the game and like beat her by like 30 seconds. So yeah, that's Cave Story 3D. Also, in this version of the game, for some reason, the scripts in the credits that would normally like switch what version of the credits play don't work for some reason. I don't know why. This game is rough, but I love it. And that's Cave Story 3D. Like, thank you so much to the Cave Story the community, to Walder, to Barry. Thunder, Cave Story Plus Runners as well. Yes. Thank you to you for reintroducing me to Cave Story. Because oh. if I had not been reintroduced to Cave Story, I would not have inevitably ended up playing Cave Story 3D. And I would not have realized how broken the glitches were, and I would not have run this set this marathon. And thank you so much for you to having us here. What's the next run? I have no idea. <laughs> I forgot. I, mean, I knew when I started the run. The next run is Sonic 06 with Focus. Um, oh, that is. having internet issues, so oh. it might be Sonic Adventure, but Sonic Block is next, basically. Sonic 06 is an awesome run, so... Yeah, good luck to the runners. Stay tuned. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. Yeah. And now we need to go grab lunch. Thanks for See participating. Ya. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. GG's on the run.